Hello everyone, let's take a look at our next problem. Prove the statement using the precise definition of a limit. A limit as x approaches 2 of x squared minus 3x is equal to negative 2. Okay, so um, if we didn't have to use the precise definition of a limit, uh, you know, it's just a polynomial, so we know that we have continuity, we could just substitute x equals 2, but um, we're going to have to use the delta epsilon approach to showing that this statement is correct. Um, so let me write down the, start by writing down the full uh, statement we need to prove in terms of epsilon and delta. All right. Um, so I'm going to play around with things a little bit before I go through the entire sequence of the proof. But the first thing that comes to mind here is I might try and factor that because uh, just looking at this immediately, in fact, you can factor this in your head. This is going to be x minus 1 times x minus 2, and we have an x minus 2 here. Uh, so we'll be able to play around with that. But let me, um, let me do a little bit of rough work here before I go through the full, uh, the full argument for how to do this. In particular, in my rough work, what I'm trying to do is given a value of epsilon, I want to try and choose the value of delta in a reasonable way uh, to make the, the rest of the proof kind of work. Okay, so I've done some rough work here to figure out a reasonable way of choosing delta in terms of epsilon. Um, it helped, there were a lot of things that helped here, drawing a, a number line. And you know, typically we want to imagine that delta is small here. So this means that if x minus two is less than delta, x is gonna be within this range here. And then given that I can factor this expression as x minus one times x minus two, with x in this interval here, this puts a maximum value on x minus one, right? The, the distance that x minus one is like the distance from x to one, plus or minus. And so that has a maximum value when x is kind of at this endpoint. Um, and when, as long as delta is quite small, that's gonna be bounded certainly by, by two. So now I'm ready to go through the entire the entire argument here. Um, well, one more point here in terms of my rough work. Given that I know that for small delta, this thing is going to be bounded by two, and this thing is sort of by implication supposed to be bounded by delta, this leads me to, to choose delta as being epsilon over two as long as epsilon is small enough. If epsilon is not small enough, if epsilon is not small enough, then this may not be true with that choice of delta, so I'm also going to choose delta to be um, less than one. Okay, so let's go through the entire construction here. So given any epsilon greater than zero, I'm gonna choose delta to be equal to the minimum of one and epsilon over two. This is the quantity that we're kind of concerned with um, bounding by epsilon. So uh, we know already this factors as x minus one times x minus two. Okay. Now, um, if x minus two uh, is less than delta, this in particular implies that x minus two is less than one. And this implies that x minus one is less than two. That easiest way to see this is by drawing that number line that I had above, okay? Um, but um, the way that I've chosen delta, because I've chosen delta to be the minimum of these two numbers, that implies uh, this thing here, right? If x minus two is less than delta, then certainly x minus two has to be less than one. 
but x minus 2 less than 1 implies x minus 1 is less than 2 from the number line. So continuing from here, we can now replace the x minus 1 with 2. Um, as long as we also replace the equality with an inequality. We also have that um, we're assuming that x minus 2 is less than delta. So this is less than 2 delta. Uh, but we also have, because delta is equal to the minimum of 1 and epsilon over 2, delta is less than or is less than or equal to epsilon over 2. Okay, so putting all of this together, we have that x squared minus 3x plus 2 is less than epsilon when um, 0 is less than Epsilon, uh, x minus 2 less than the minimum of 1 and epsilon over 2. And that does it. That shows that our limit is the value we wanted according to the precise definition of limit. Um, yeah, not too much to say about this one. Uh, the rough help, the rough work at the beginning certainly helped. Drawing the number line to juggle how these inequalities worked also helped. Uh, and also writing down exactly the statement we wanted to prove allowed me to identify right away that this thing factors uh, into some term which we kind of expect to exist because we're taking the limit as x approaches to and something else that we have to work with and try and control. Um, if I have any more to say about this one, I'll write it down in the description. Otherwise, thanks for watching.